The National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 12. Tonight, a first play by a new author, Mother, written by Stanley Robert Mednick, a most talented young American for whom we forecast, and he'd better not disappoint us, a brilliant future. With the production directed by Harry W. Junkin, here is Stanley Robert Mednick's first radio play, Mother. Attraction 12 on Radio City Playhouse. <laughs> It's 7 o'clock on New Year's Eve in New York, the most exciting night of the year in the world's most exciting town. The offices in the RCA building are still brightly lit. The restaurants and bars are crowded. There are parties everywhere, although some of them show signs of breaking up. Everybody's having a wonderful time. Everybody except Mary Adams. Mary is 30, and she never seems to have a really good time. And she's just a little bit shy, too shy for her own good. Come on, Sylvia. Let's go. It's 7 o'clock. Okay, Mary, but it's a wonderful party. Well, are you coming or not? <laughs> Look at those guys. Aren't they a scream? Yes. Yes, sure. The scream? They're drunk. All drunk. It's disgusting. I'm glad I'm not like them. Getting drunk just because one rotten year is ending and another beginning. Well, what? For Pete's sake, Mary, you've been asking me to leave for an hour, now you're standing there gawking. Do you want me to walk to the subway with you or not? I, I don't... Well, yes. <laughs> yes, sure. Oh, I don't want to walk to the subway with her. All she'll do is tell me about the date she's having tonight. How handsome he is. How he dances so well, and I'm not interested. Actually, they go to a dive to have dinner. Then they go dancing with hundreds of people coughing smoke in their faces. And then they come home dead drunk and say they had a wonderful time. Well, what are we waiting for? You look a little funny, Mary. Is anything wrong? No. Nothing's the matter. For a minute, I thought you were sick or something. Uh, I'm fine. Shall we go? Sure. <laughs> Why am I walking with her? Why didn't I tell her I had some last-minute shopping to do? Now she's going to boast, boast and boast like all of them. Isn't this crazy, Sylvia? Raining in New York City on New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I'm still going to have fun. Are you going with me? No, I'm not. I'm going to spend a quiet evening at home. Oh. Oh, what? Nothing. I was just thinking. <laughs> But I know what she was thinking. She was thinking about me not going anyplace tonight. She's probably glad, too. I know that type. Oh, why should I bother? After all, I must stay home tonight. It isn't right to keep an invalid mother home alone, especially on New Year's Eve when there are drunks all over. Mother would be very unhappy and frightened if I didn't stay home with her. Here's the subway. Coming down. As a matter of fact, no. I just remember I have to get something down the street. Oh, I'll wait for you. Oh, no, you don't have to. It'll take some time. You better go on ahead of me. Uh, I'll see you later in the week. Okay, Mary. Good night. Happy New Year. Uh, Happy New Year. There, I'm rid of her. Thank heaven. Now I'll wait here for a few minutes till I'm sure her train is gone. Then I'll go down. Why didn't I go with her on that train? I was afraid, that's why, and jealous. Afraid she'd talk about her date and jealous because I've never had one. Oh, I must get this silly talk out of my head. I know very well the only reason I haven't had a date is because I haven't had time for any. But with Mother ill for as long as I can remember in my job and all, let the others waste their time on dates. I'll take care of my mother. Oh, 
Well, I suppose your train has left. I can go down now. Uh, excuse me, miss. Oh, you, you startled me. Oh, what does a strange man want with me? He looks odd. I must get away from him. I must. I'll run down the subway steps. There are people there. He can't try anything if there are people around. What do you want? Uh, I'm a stranger here, miss, and I, I was wondering if you could direct me to Fifth Avenue. Three blocks west. <laughs> Is that all? Uh, that's all. <laughs> well, thank you. you. You're welcome. Well, I've told him what he wanted to know. Why doesn't he leave? Why is he just standing there? If, if he thinks he's going to make time with me. Is there something else? Uh, well, miss. Yes? I I'm a stranger here. Oh, he already told me that. Why is he stalling? Why? I know. He thinks I'm a cheap pickup. That's what he thinks. Well, he's greatly mistaken and let him make just one, just one sassy remark, and I'll scream for a cop. I know these types prowling around for helpless women. He's probably drunk. You say you're a stranger here? Yes. I, I realize this may sound sort of queer, but since I know absolutely nobody in New York, I was thinking, well, that is... Well, I hope you don't think I'm trying to be fresh, but... Well, it's this way. Are you busy tonight? Busy tonight? Why, uh... I've got my I... umbrella handy. I'll call a cop. I'll scream. I'll yell. I'll hit him. Imagine saying that to me. To me. Mother will be furious when she hears this. She always tells me not to wear red. People think the wrong things. Like this prowling bum. Am I busy tonight? Yes. Well, I, I, I'm... Uh... Well, I am busy. I am busy. I have to stay home with my mother. Well, I've got to tell him I just can't stand here gaping. I can't say I'm not busy. You want me to go with him. I don't want to go with him. Do I? Maybe I do. But he may murder me for all I know. I wonder if he would... No. He looks nice. He looks harmless. I've got to say something for heaven's sakes, but what will I say? I'll say I have to go home to my sick mother. But I don't want to. I don't. I want to go with this man. <gasps> I have all things to think. I'm behaving like a... Like a... I just can't go with him. Mother is home ill. As a matter of fact, I'm not busy tonight. Oh, wonderful. Do you think you'd mind having a bite with me and then maybe go dancing? But I don't know you. Oh, I can fix that. My name's Harry. Harry Wilson. <sighs> I come from Cleveland, Ohio, work in an office there. I'm 33 years old, live with my parents when I'm home, and I'm not married. Now tell me, what's your name? Mary. Mary Adams. Oh, I shouldn't have told him. Now he won't leave me alone. I don't care. He's a nice, friendly man. He's lonely. He's just looking for a companion. I'll go with him. I have nothing to lose. Of course I'll go with him. I deserve a good time. I'll leave Mother alone for once. Fifteen years I've spent New Year's Eve at home with Mother. Oh, but Mother needs me. She's sick. So what? She's sick. She's made me sick fifteen years nagging, yelling, preaching. It's because of her that I'm an old maid. Oh, I've got to get these thoughts out of my head. Mother is the loveliest lady in the world. I love her deeply. She always sacrificed so much for me. And I think of leaving her alone on New Year's Eve. I can't go with this gentleman. I can't. I can't. Mary Adams. Just plain Mary. Mary? That's a wonderful name. Well, now that we know each other, is it okay? Well, I can't go. A well-brought-up lady doesn't allow herself to be picked up at night by strangers, even by nice, harmless-looking strangers. Well, uh, yes, I will go with you. Well. No, I've done it. I've consented. Now I have to go with him. So what? So I'll go with him, and I'll have a wonderful time. I'll enjoy myself on New Year's Eve for a change. I'll have a good time for once in my boring life. But I better call Mother. She'll worry otherwise. And I'll stop at a drugstore and call her. Oh, maybe I better not. She'll yell at me and rant. She'll tell me all sorts of things. Now she'll tell me I'll be the death of her yet. I won't call her. Oh, but I must. She'll think I was run over. She has enough worries. I don't want to add to them, but if I do phone, she'll insist I come home. I won't call her. I don't care what worries she has. She certainly gives me enough. 
<laughs> Harry, I have a funny feeling this is going to be a wonderful night. <laughs> I like that music. Do you? Very much. You no, know, it reminds me of years ago, way before the war. I was in college then. We used to have music like that at all our dances. What were you studying at college? Medicine. Uh, then you're a doctor. Oh, no, I'm not. You see, things sort of interrupted my plans. <laughs> what things? Well, war came along, and when that was over, I didn't feel like spending six or seven years more in school. And what do you do in Cleveland? I work in the office of a department store. <gasps> not very exciting, but I manage to live. And every so often, I get a few days off, and I travel around. That's how I happen to come to New York. Oh, I see. Oh, he is a nice fellow. I'm awfully glad I came. Mother would like him, too. Why don't I invite him to the house for dinner some night? No, I better not. After all, the only reason he took me out was because he had no one else. I'm sure he wouldn't want to see me after this. Why should he? I'm no raving beauty. He's only seen me at night under lights. I look different in daylight. What were you thinking of, Mary? Thinking? Uh -huh. Why, it wasn't anything. I, I was just wondering if you were engaged. No. Now, why did I have to say that? What difference does it make? And he says, yes, I'll be disillusioned all evening. Oh, I ought to be shot. I don't mean to, to snoop by asking if you were engaged. Oh, no, I'm not engaged. I was before the war, but things didn't pan out. She's married now to a garage mechanic in Los Angeles. Very happy, too, I hear. Uh, are, are you attached to anybody in particular? Me? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no. Hmm. He just asked that to be polite. He knows inwardly that no man would look twice at me. He's a very kind man, but I wish he wouldn't pity me. I don't like people to pity me. I know now. He only asked me to go out with him because I looked lonely at the subway. Oh, now, that's a silly thought. He asked me to go out because he wanted to. No man out of pity asks a strange girl for a date, especially on New Year's Eve. Oh, no. I'm not attached to anybody. Well, were you ever engaged? Oh, yes. When I graduated from high school, I went with a fellow for a few months. Then I found he wasn't exactly my type. I lied. I lied like Sylvie and the rest of them just to make an impression on a silly man. Martha would be furious if she knew. Mother's always furious. Well, so I did lie. I didn't hurt anybody, at least. He, he, he wasn't my type at all. Well, at any rate, you don't have to worry. I bet a hundred fellows bother you a week. Well, not exactly. You see, I have an invalid mother. She takes up most of my spare time. I don't usually have time for such things as dates. Oh, that's too bad. Ladies and gentlemen, in five minutes, the new year will be ushered in. And we're going to play all Lang Syne. Now, until then, we'd like all of you to come out on the dance floor so we can all celebrate the wonderful new year together. Shall we dance, Mary? I don't dance well, Harry. <laughs> Neither do I. But at least we'll be better than being the only ones at a table. Okay. But I warn you. <laughs> it's almost midnight. Yes. Yes. And I always feel kind of sad on New Year's. It brings back so many memories. For me, too. For me, too. Memories of sitting next to a radio, hearing the crowds in Times Square yelling their heads off while Mother told me not to listen to such drivel. Memories. What memories does it bring back for you, Harry? Oh, all sorts. Mainly about Leela. Who's Leela? The girl I was engaged to. <laughs> she was a sweet kid. But you said things didn't pan out. Oh, no, they didn't. Oh, you know, she wanted to run around when I wanted to stay home. She wanted me to go into business. I didn't. I wanted to live one place, she another. But I remember her. Well, if you were engaged to her, why not? Oh, remember her. Sure, he remembers her. <laughs> He's probably married to her. Probably has four kids or something. Just stringing me along. One at a date for New Year's that makes up some silly lies about his being a stranger in New York, not knowing anybody. I bet he lives in New York. He thinks I'm a pickup. That's what he thinks. I was crazy to go with him. I'm so ashamed of what Mother will think. Well, it's, it's still not too late. I'll go home. I'll make some excuse. I'll say, it's all been very nice, but I really have to get home. <laughs> Happy New Year, Mary. Happy New Year, Harry. 
Mary, would you mind? Would I mind? He wants to kiss me. I mustn't let him. It's not right. Think of Mother. She wouldn't like it. No. No, no, no. I mustn't kiss him. I mustn't. I mustn't. I wouldn't mind, Harry. You're an awfully lovely girl, Mary. <laughs> oh, it's... Uh, Mary, what's happening? Why are you crying? Oh, I always get sentimental on New Year's Eve. There's really <laughs> nothing. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> Happy New Year, Harry. <laughs> I do wish the band would stop playing that song. Uh, don't you like it? Usually, yes. But right now, I want something light and gay. Something bouncing. To fit your mood. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's absolutely amazing. What is You. Oh. An hour ago, you were nervous and jumpy. Every few seconds, you seem a million miles away. And now? Now, you're somehow changed. I don't know. You're you're suddenly bubbling. Why, even your eyes are glittering. It's just fancy lighting the heavier. It's not the lighting. Okay. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Oh, that's the first real compliment I've ever had. Oh, he is nice. And what if he is married or engaged? He's mine for now, and nothing else matters. What about later? I'll never see him again, and that will make me feel even worse. No, oh, I won't think about it. I'm having fun, really, I am. I'll worry about later, later. Hey, Mary, hmm? you're a million miles away again. No, I'm not, Harry. No, I'm not. I'm right here, next to you. <laughs> So what? I hate things out of season. It should be snowing now. And what would you be doing if it were snowing? Walking. Well, isn't that what we're doing now? It's different walking in the snow. I love to hear the crunching sound of my boots plowing in. <laughs> I love that cold wind that makes my nose so red. <laughs> <laughs> my mother thinks I'm weird when I tell her these things. She always tells me I'll get pneumonia. Mm, my mother is the same. Can't see the poetry in walking in the rain. What do you like about walking in the rain? Me? Oh, I like to sing in the rain. Sing? Sure. Haven't you ever sung in the rain? No. Oh, then you've missed a wonderful experience. There's nothing like it. <clears throat> Though April showers may come your way. Oh, Harry. They bring the flowers. That bloom in me. Tight, so what? It's New Year's Eve. That's the night when people let loose. Oh, no. That's the night when people are supposed to do what they want, and I want to sing. Oh, no, Harry, don't. So when it's raining, I have no regrets. Oh, no. Come on, Mary. No. Because it isn't raining rain, you know. It's raining violets. Come on, Mary, oh. sing. And when you see clouds... Upon a hill, you soon will see, sing Mary Clouds of Daffodil, that's the way. So keep on looking for a bluebird and listening for his song whenever April showers. <laughs> you see what fun it is? Yes, Harry. Harry. Huh? What's up? Let's cross the street quickly. Why? What's happened? There's someone down the street I don't want to see. Please, I have my reason. Okay, Mary, who is it? That blonde girl, she's working in the office with me. A... Don't look now, Harry. I think it's too late. She's spotted her. Oh, no. She's coming here. Then let's cross. Oh, but she sees you. It'll look as if you're purposely trying to avoid her. Oh, Mary, hi Hello, Sylvia. Oh, so this is why you had to get down the street. No wonder you didn't want me to wait for you. Well, aren't you going to introduce me? Uh, of course. Harry, this is Sylvia Miller. How do you do? Uh, Sylvia, Mr. Harry Wilson. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. This mug of mine's named Brian or huh? something. He'll say hello if he isn't too drunk. Say hello, lover boy. Hello. Jim, <laughs> please! <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, Sylvia, please don't... marry you. Blame me. All your big talk about spending a quiet evening at home, and then you go crying about this like all the rest oh, of us. You know, Mr. Wilson, mm -hmm. your girl Mary's always putting on airs at the office. She's got yeah. some queer idea about being better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. Even though she's only been with us two weeks, I think it's not out. <laughs> but I guess she ain't after all. Hi, Mary. Oh, what's the matter? Did I say something wrong as usual, or 
How about just a little bit more? All right, Sylvie, stop gabbing. I want to get going. <laughs> Can you see it's my lover, boy? We've been painting the town red all night, and he still thinks it needs an overcoat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. we got to go now, Mary. Yeah, we got to go. Go so along, Miss Lou Rose. Yeah, we got to go. Hi, Thanks to have met you. Go. Bye, Mary. Go, go, go. See you in the office. I will talk nothing about tonight. Say goodbye, lover, boy. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry, Harry. Terribly sorry. For what? Your friend? She's not my friend. You think I'd have a friend like her? Well, don't get worked up, Mary. She was only drunk. She didn't even know what she was saying. She probably won't even remember having met you. No. No, I suppose she won't. Yes, she will. She'll have a fine time in the office telling people that Mary Adams was running around on New Year's Eve with a man who picked her up, and she'll be telling the truth, too. Everybody will laugh when she tells them. And it'll get back to Mother. And I won't be able to deny it either, because it's all true. But it's still not too late still can break away from him. I'll tell him I have to go home. I'll tell him. It's still not too late. Harry, I... I it's getting late, Harry. I, I have to be getting home. Oh, it's not that late. But it is. My mother asked... Well, she wants me home early. Well, okay, Mary. I'm going home alone. Alone? No, oh, no, you aren't. You think I'm the type that let my date go home alone on New Year's Eve with drunkards roaming all over? But I must <laughs> go home alone, Harry. But why? I must. That's why... Look, Harry, I have to tell you something. I lied to you earlier this evening when I said I wasn't engaged. I am. But you see, my fellow and I had an argument. Oh, it wasn't really anything, just a silly quarrel. Well, I just wanted to spite him. And that's why I let you pick me. That's why I went out with you tonight. But I realize it was a terrible thing to do. I'm just leading you along on a string, and you're too nice for that. And that's why it's best to say goodbye now, to forget about tonight. And... I see. Don't think too lowly of me, Harry. After all, tonight was... Just for laughs. Oh, no. Then what was it? Well, I... It was for laughs. When you make up with your boyfriend, you can tell him what a hilarious time you had on New Year's Eve with a jerk from Ohio. Please don't say such things, well, Harry. Well, it's true. That's what Leela did. That's what most girls do. I thought you were different. Oh, Harry, I... thought I... you were sweet and kind. I thought you were the kind who'd understand a fellow like me. I thought I'd like to see you again. I wanted to see you again. No, I see I was just wasting my time. Your friend was right. You're no different from the others. Harry! So long, Mary. Happy New Year! Harry, wait! Wait, please! Harry, come back! Come back! Harry! Subway, go faster. I want to go home. Um, that couple over there. Necking. Necking in public. Haven't they any self-respect? Oh, why should I bother? I don't behave like them. I behaved very sensibly this evening. I did what was right. I did. Oh, why do I have to lie to myself? The reason I didn't let him take me home was because I'm stupid. He liked me. But I threw him over simply because I was afraid of what Sylvia would think and what Mother would say. It's my fear. My idiotic, ridiculous fear that made me give him up. I have only myself to blame. Only myself. I'm almost home. Just down the block, then up the steps. Oh, thank heavens. What will I tell Mother? True? No. No, I mustn't. She'll yell and rant. She'll laugh, maybe. She won't even believe me. I know what. I'll tell her Sylvia's date suddenly got sick, and Syl and I went to the movies. I, um, had tried to get her on the phone all evening, but the lines were tied up because of the holiday. Oh, maybe she's sleeping. Maybe she won't even hear me come in. Well, here I am. There's a light on in the browns. I wonder why. Home. Oh. Hello, Mary. 
Oh, Mrs. Brown, up a bit late tonight? Oh, you know, the new year and all. We even had a little shindig a while ago. Just broke up. Uh, that's nice. I rang your bell to see if you were home, but I guess you weren't. Uh, no, I, I had an appointment. Well, I better run now. Mother's expecting Mother. me. Now, Mary, please. You know perfectly well... Stop it! Mary, you've please. just got to get it through your head. I mean, you've got to realize... Stop it! Stop it! But Mary, your mother's dead! She's been dead for over two years. Just got to realize it. She isn't dead. You're lying. You've always lied to me. She isn't dead. She isn't. She isn't. She isn't. Mother's not dead. Mother... New Year's Eve is a climax, a climax of many things. Something ends, and something begins on New Year's Eve. And sometimes, something both begins and ends. That was Mother, Attraction 12 on Radio City Playhouse, written by Stanley Robert Mednick. The production was directed by Harry W. Junkin. Members of the cast included Sylvia Davis, Abby Lewis, Anne Petoniak, Ross Martin, and Eugene Francis. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shield. Radio City Playhouse is supervised for the National Broadcasting Company by Richard P. McDonough. <laughs> Next week, we are happy to welcome Miss Jan Minor to a third appearance on Radio City Playhouse. She'll be heard as Constance in a tense and moving story written by our director, Harry W. Duncan. We hope you'll be with us and that you'll note our new time and broadcast date, Saturday at 8 o'clock. Be with us then next Saturday, 8 o'clock, for Soundless, Attraction 13 on Radio City Playhouse. Robert Warren speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>